Well, recently the AMD 23.2.1 drivers were released and we finally got another driver for the RX 6000, 5000, Vega and RX 500 and 400 cards after the 22.11.2 that was released in the end of November. That same driver brought a lot of fixed issues, it brought actually more performance for some games on the RX 6000 series, as you can see on this video that I made of the 22 point, of the 23.2.1 driver, sorry, the review, but now I kind of decided to deep dive into it and make, or at least to dive deeper into it um, and make a video more about the 22.11.2 versus the 23.2.1 drivers, okay? This because we we had some interesting news like this one where they actually claim up to 40% increase on the RX 6000 series on 3D Mark Ray Tracing Benchmark. Now, I, I saw news like this, but I didn't actually see any performance, any videos to see if these drivers actually improve the ray tracing performance on the RX 6000 series or not. And that's basically what I'm doing on this video, testing the RX 6650 XT, a low to mid tier GPU, and the RX 6800, which is more on the upper side of the mid tier, okay? Um, so yeah. <laughs> Do the 23.2.1 drivers actually increase the ray tracing performance on the RX 6000 series or not? Let's find out. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mobile, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. To start with, the 22.11.2 drivers are presented by the red bars, the 23.2.1 by the black ones and the upper section is for ray tracing off with the lower section for ray tracing on. It seems that the RX 6650 XT lost performance in the newer drivers in terms of rasterization, having a decrease of 4 FPS, something that did not happen on the ray tracing benchmark, where we actually got slightly better results. With the RX 6800 we once again lost performance in terms of rasterization, but at least this time we lost average FPS, but we got an increase in the 1% lows, being the ray tracing results virtually the same. In Far Cry 6, the RX 6650 XT once again loses rasterization performance, in this case 4 average FPS, but most importantly 9 FPS in the 1% lows. Although as we go to the ray tracing benchmarks, we do have a massive 18 FPS increase in the 1% lows, translating to a 32% performance uplift. Meaning that if this car didn't actually have decreased performance in terms of rasterization, the ray tracing performance increase would be even bigger, I suppose. Although as we move to the RX 6800 and 1440p, we do see a mild performance increase in rasterization as opposed to the RX 6650 XT and a decent increase in rate racing 1% lows once again, this time not 32% but a good 10% increase. Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those games where AMD stated to have a performance uplift and at 1080p the RX 6650 XT did have a mild increase in the averages but had a huge increase in the 1% lows, going from 64.7 to 91.2 FPS, which is just a 41% increase in performance. In terms of ray tracing the changes were way less noticeable due to the lower FPS output, but they're still there. With the RX 6800 the changes are even crazier though, with a 56% increase in the 1% lows, but this time also 15% increase in the averages, leading to a much smoother gameplay experience. Incredible uplift for this card, where even the ray tracing performance got a noticeable boost. Doom Eternal was a gameplay so the margin of error is quite bigger by the way. At 1080p the RX 6650 XT actually lost performance with a new driver, again, but as soon as we enable ray tracing the RX 6650 XT summons a reverse card and we actually get more performance with the newer drivers, again, strange. 
Moving to the RX 6800, things are more stable, with the rasterization results being virtually the same, having a mild increase of 6 average FPS when using ray tracing, but also a 1% loss decrease, which could have something to do with the ice bomb that leads to a big performance drop when using ray tracing. The Callisto Protocol benchmark is currently a total mess and I'm kind of already regretting not testing the game in real gameplay. But well, at 1080p the RX 6650 XD saw no performance uplifts whatsoever here, with 1% loss results being all around the place. And moving to the RX 6800, well, we seem to have a more stable result overall, but still we do have lower FPS numbers in most recent drivers, in the most recent drivers, but... We know how messed up this benchmark is by the simple fact that rasterization results are barely higher than the ray tracing ones, while in real gameplay they're much higher, meaning that we have much higher FPS with rasterization than ray tracing. Overall, just forget about this game. On Ghostwire Tokyo, the RX 6650 XT is kind of showing the opposite results compared to the previous tests. This time we do have an increase in the 1% loss with ray tracing off, but as soon as we enable it, we actually get a slight performance decrease. With the RX 6800 results being a bit more stable, with a slight decrease now being observed in terms of rasterization, in the 1% loss, and in terms of ray tracing, in the averages. But once again, take in consideration that this is a gameplay, so the margin of error is a bit bigger. On Dying Light 2, since ray tracing actually destroys the FPS numbers, I decided to bring FSR2 in the mix as well. At 1080p, the RX 6650 XT had exactly the same results in rasterization, but we did have a performance increase when using ray tracing, going from 34 to 37 FPS, which is around an 8.8% performance increase. That same performance increase goes down to 5.5% though when using FSR, but that's maybe due to the upscaling algorithm. With the RX 6800 things are more or less the same, but it seems that on this card the biggest ray tracing performance increase was in the 1% lows, with a 9% increase without FSR and 5.5% with it. So more or less in line with what we had before with the 6650 XT. Interesting. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition is our last title, and we only have two bars since this game is full ray tracing and does not support rasterization mode. So yeah. At 1080p the RX 6650 XT was struggling to achieve 50 average FPS and it did have a mild increase with the newer drivers, but overall, nothing really noticeable. And the same applies to the RX 6800 at 1440p that had exactly 1 FPS increase on average and not even 1 FPS in the 1% lows, leading to virtually the same results. Now, as for the averages, I am not including the Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, by the way. And as for the 6650 XT at 1080p, it actually had a 0.8% decrease in average performance in terms of rasterization with the newer drivers, but also had a 5% increase in the 1% lows. In terms of ray tracing, we also had a 1.9% increase in the averages and 6.8% increase in the 1% lows, which is not bad at all. And let me tell you that the 1% lows increase would be much higher if we didn't have those messed up results in the Callisto Protocol benchmark. The RX 6800 shows a positive picture across the board, with a 1.6% increase in the average rasterization and 6.4% increase in the 1% lows, with the ray tracing performance also increasing by 1.9% on average and 4.2% in the 1% lows. Overall, positive results in almost all scenarios. And well, people, as you saw, well, we have overall a mild increase in performance in terms of rasterization and ray tracing performance. Uh, ray tracing performance did have um, a bigger improvement compared to the rasterization performance, where we actually had slightly lower results, or let's say within the margin of error, with the 6650 XT, but overall, things were good. For example, Guardians of the Galaxy got a huge performance increase, not only in the averages, like the 6800, but also in the 1% lows, where the increase was amazing. Now, as for people having like stutters and crashes with these drivers, I do advise you to do a clean installation with DDU, and also, 
take a look at your overclocking settings if you're using them because depending on driver from driver to driver version the stability of your of your overclocking settings may vary so in some driver versions it may be stable but in other driver versions it may not be that stable so Test everything at stock first, and if it runs well, now test the overclocking settings. If the overclocking settings give you stutters and so on, you know that you have to tweak your overclocking settings for the newer driver version. But overall, it is what it is. My battery is actually running off. It is what it is. We actually gained performance. We lost some performance in rasterization, but we gained some performance overall in rasterization. Um, and overall, like I told you, in average, in rasterization and ray tracing performance, so I guess it's a good thing. As always, leave your comment in the comment section, let me know what you think of these drivers, what's your experience with these drivers, and if you actually got a performance increase or decrease, and what GPU do you have, so we can all know what's going on, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Thanks a lot for watching and pow! See you in the next video. My battery is really, really running off. Ciao!